Hello, my special Fay people. I'm so happy you're here. And I, I have been looking forward to this March um, fairy smashing club day um, because March is an important day. But before I get, uh, March 17th is an important day for us. But before I get into that, I have something fun and playful. So I want you to take a deep full breath and exhale. And as you come into this fairy grove that we're standing in, open your mind, open your heart. And for the next minute and, and a half, let's have some whopping leprechaun fun. <laughs> Look at all you leprechauns. We should have a dance party. A leprechaun dance party. Dance, dance, leprechaun dance, dance, dance. Leprechaun dance, dance, dance. Leprechaun dance, do a dance for me. Get up and dance, you leprechauns. Get up and dance. Bow, bow, leprechaun bow, bow, bow. Leprechaun bow, bow, bow. Leprechaun bow, do a bow for me. Bow to your left. too fun. I had to do that, you know, because let me stop sharing and come back to you. Because we always uh, think of St. Patrick's Day in conjunction with what? Leprechauns. Yes, we think of them with leprechauns and four leaf clovers and pots of gold. And so um, I'm here to share just a little bit of oral fairy tradition um, information with you to set the energy and the tone for our creation today. First of all, um, Patrick, the man named Patrick, some of you may know this, actually came from Scotland into Ireland and he was a slave. He was brought in as a slave. And that was around, um, when, that, when that happened, that was actually about 432 AD, okay? 432 AD. He spent six years in slavery before he was actually uh, freed. And um, during that time, he uh, connected up with a, a Saint Prosper or something like that. I'm, I don't know some of that uh, early. Uh, Irish Catholic history, but, um, and uh, he was, he embraced the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, which had set up in Ireland a few years before he was brought in around 431. Okay, so it was already uh, uh, formulating. Um, now, here's the thing about St. Patrick. The reason why St. Patrick became very important to the Irish people um, is because he went to the top of a mountain uh, in the western province at, named uh, Krogan Eigel, which is now uh, Crockpatrick, which is his holy hill. And this was around the mid 16th century, right? And he went up there and he summoned all the people around him, his followers, and also pagans, just anybody who lived there. And he prayed to God, and he asked God to ordain that from that day forward, there was a place in heaven for 
all Irish people. So the Irish went, yeah, and they embraced him uh, as an important uh, factor in uh, Ireland. And he, became, because he prayed for their souls, he prayed for the Irish souls and secured the Irish people. And um, he set up his, his big strong area in Armagh, which is Northern Ireland, which is where my people are from. Um, so that's really important to know because that's kind of like the modern, the modern understanding of St. Patrick's Day. But if we go back, back, back into ancient times, which he's in ancient times, but if we go behind him in ancient times, we are looking at the indigenous or, or what is now labeled as the pagan, um, belief system of Ireland, which I need to share with you in Ireland, even today, pagan belief is very, very embraced in the Catholic Church. As those of you who, you know, uh, in Goddess Moons also learned about uh, Bridget, St. Bridget, and my interactions with the, the Bridgetines, the, the uh, soulless breed community of Irish nuns. <laughs> um, so, St. Patrick's Hill is also on the site of a traditional pilgrimage site, which is now known as um, the, the feast day of St. Uh, Patrick. And so he's completely absorbed that whole area and it's, it's ordained his. So uh, all the pagans around there are all the Irish people are like, yeah, sure. He secures our place in heaven. So let him be, let him be, let him do his thing for us. He's good for us. Um, okay. So how does leprechauns and what, why did St. Patrick's Day really happen? Well, St. Patrick actually was the one who, even though he secured a place for heaven for the Irish people, because Ireland is a predominant goddess land, okay, um, he decided to drive the snakes out of Ireland. Now, there are no snakes. There are no reptiles in Ireland because it's on a carbon copper platform. It's a, it's a true vortex, if you know about vortexes and, and portal holes and stuff. And there's a vaporous gas that's not toxic for humans, although I kind of disagree, but... Um, so they, the reptiles, not even frogs, nothing. Amphibians, reptiles can live there. They can't, they, there's no snakes in Ireland. But um, at that time, the goddess energy is known to be connected with what the kundalini energy, the snake inside of us. And the snake motif is not an uncommon motif at the old uh, megalithic sites because it also was used to show the pattern of the sun on its path for the will of the year for the solar will. And because priestesses were very much a part of uh, the bardic and druidic practices of ancient Ireland, um, his, he made it his mission to overthrow the goddess. So he's known for attempting to drive the snakes out of Ireland, although uh, that's what he did that. And he did it at a, a very important stronghold for uh, the goddess Cora who is known to be more of a snake-like goddess who comes out of a certain lake. And that's the lake that he hit and really uh, worked at banishing um, any connection to the goddess energy. Now, at that time, um, in addition to the goddess uh, and all her different forms in Ireland, Lulamfada, okay? Lulamfada, the sun god, all right? who at this time of the year is very prominent because the sun is both masculine and feminine. It's born through the brio, say it as a divine feminine energy. And then as it moves towards the vernal equinox, it begins to shift and the sun God begins to take over and dances with the goddess until summer solstice. 
and where the goddess is, is honored significantly. And then she recedes and he takes over through the remainder of the year, especially the end of summer, autumn. It's fascinating what you learn uh, with regards to energies. Okay. Lou, everybody's heard of Lou, the sun god, even today, even if you're not Irish, most people have heard about Lou, the Irish god. Um, Lou of the long arm, long arm because he has those solar arms reaching out to us, okay? Um, his people, his tribes were known as leprechauns. That's the origin of the word leprechauns. So when, when uh, St. Patrick came in to drive the snakes out of Ireland, it also included the tribe of Lou because it was pretty. And there's, there's a Gaelic, you know, there's Gaelic terminology for that tribe and everything, but it translates into, in English, into leprechaun. Um, so his attempt also was to drive out Lou, the leprechauns. So like anything, to keep something alive, we bring it into story form when it's being so opposed. And so the leprechauns became our fun little playful things, right? They became little crazy uh, beings, but they were small. At that time, the people were smaller. Here's the most traditional version of a leprechaun. They wore red pointed hats. That's a leprechaun in the most traditional uh, oldest um, a vision, all right? So I've got a couple of I've got a couple of traditionals here. And then the hat evolved. And right here you can see this one. His little pointed hat is now taken on the transformation as we're moving into more modern times. And then of course the leprechaun becomes known wearing the top hat more civil, more uh, gentlemanly like, right? Because he's fully, fully now known as just a folklore, as a folktale, all remembrance of the leprechaun tribe of Lulamfada diminished and for most people gone out of common knowledge. And so we have the hat becoming more refined as we go into colonialism. And then of course we become the proper top hat, right? The proper top hat, but still within the leprechaun, I'm gonna come over to this little window over here so you can see it. And I'll pin it for you for just a sec. Let me double pin it because this is kind of fun. But what was known with the leprechauns, yes, okay, they became shoe people, right? <laughs> but what was known to always be in the leprechaun's hood was gold. All right, and there's my moonstone that my husband found on the beach today for me. And I said, well, that's perfect. We're gonna bring that moonstone right into the leprechaun's hat. And these are traditional Irish coins that are no longer in use because the Euro has supplanted them, but their coins all had a beautiful harp printed on them. And Era, which is the goddess Era, after whom Ireland is named. So there you have some oral fairy tradition information that's not commonly found. Uh, in Ireland. By the way, this little leprechaun here um, was first given to me when I was brought over, when I was flown over to Ireland back in 1994 to do a, a woman's weekend. So I'm going to, I hear you, Rihanna, but let me finish, please. Um, so I'm going to bring this little leprechaun onto my workstation because this is the energy that we're actually going to be predominantly working with today. So in our in our cosmic in our fairy time cosmic books we are going to be working with um i i've put it into the air i'm putting it in, into the air section all right uh so you know where i'm going to be working at in the fairy time uh the fairy time book all right so that's setting up the energy of what we're doing so let me unpin my workstation for a moment. And uh, Rhiannon, 
You didn't have it pinned, so we didn't see any of that. Oh, well, all right. That's okay. <laughs> That's what I was trying to tell you before you finished. Um, on, the, on the video, it's pinned. So on the video. So what you didn't see was the little top hat. Here, let me unpin you, though. <laughs> was the little top hat. And let me put me back on. All right, was the little top hat with the Irish coins. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin. <laughs> you can see it now, right? The Irish coins, all right? And these are all before the Euro. And as you can see, this one's the easiest to see. On the back of them is the harp and the name Era, which is the goddess name from, from Ireland. And then this was the little moonstone that Jack found on the beach day, almost a perfect sphere. So it's, it's very cool. So I am putting those in here. And then all I showed you was my little leprechaun the first leprechaun I was ever given that I ever received, which was given to me at the airport at Dublin airport in Ireland. So he's very cute, very cute. And, and then I just showed you a blank page. So it's just in the, it's just in the, the air section of my, the air section of my cosmic smash book for fairy time. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the spotlight and I'm gonna come back. Okay, you can all see me now, right? Yeah, all right. So we've got a couple of fun things. I don't know who all is going to follow the process, but I'm actually going to be um, going, uh, I'm going to be uh, doing it step by step by step and sharing it with you. You're welcome to go off and do your own thing, um, but I'm going to be working with the traditional uh, bardic information and the leprechaun, and um, I'll be talking the whole time. I'll, I'll have my workstation only spotlight on the page, and I have some fun and playful things that I'll be doing. Um, and so as I do a step, and if you're following along, I will actually stop a couple of times as something's drying um, to share some more information with you. So for example, one of the first things I wanna share with you is I want you to find and have your leprechaun name, okay? So using the first initial, of your name, I will go through and tell you what your first name is, and then I'll tell you what your last name is. So let's see, I'll go across the screen. So Rhiannon, your first name is Naughty. <laughs> Victoria, yours is Rowdy. Terry, yours is Bashful. And mine is spoiled. <laughs> and now our last names, Rhiannon. Oh, you have to tell me, you have to, you have to tell me what month you're born in. So uh, Rhiannon, what month are you born in? June. June. Okay, so you are naughty pointy ears. That's your leprechaun name. Okay, Victoria, what month are you born in? May. May, okay. So you are rowdy nugget nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Terry, what month are you? January. You're January, yes. So you are bashful short legs <laughs> and my mine i'm july mine is spoiled clover hair <laughs> anyways i'll be posting that little fun thing uh, it's from a girls club i'll be posting that to our um 
<laughs> our group chat. It's too cute, too, too cute. All right, so let me share. I didn't do up a sample because I'm doing this with you. I felt I, I only should do it once. I did a couple of things ahead of time to show you, but the first thing that's important is at this time of year, it's the annual Irish blessing time. This is just that we, we give those blessings. And we also work with the rainbow at this time of year, the 42 degrees from the, you know. And so on this book now, we're doing it just a little bit different than we normally do a cosmic smash book. Usually on a cosmic smash book, we start off by writing an intention and then we, just so over it and then we begin painting. Now you are very, very welcome to do a, um, a, a blessing, but we're gonna fill this page up with Irish blessing also. Um, now, so one of the things that you might wanna do again, uh, uh, there's space for it, is if you feel a need to gesso your pages first, do a light coating of gesso on it. I'm gonna put a quick splash of gesso and then I'm going to do a quick blow dry with my blow dry gun. So in the meantime, one of the things, if you're not going to do that step, one of the things you might want to consider and think about is doing the rainbow across the page because after I blow dry, I will do that. I'll go right into painting um, strips of the rainbow and I there's seven colors in the rainbow we're going to use our watercolors to paint those across the page and what I did was I counted every four lines if you count every four lines that's going to divide your page up evenly for seven uh, colors and we're going to start with red of course to orange to yellow to green to blue to purple to, to white, okay? So we're gonna paint that rainbow across the page. So at this point, I'm gonna just spotlight my camera. And I'm gonna invite everybody at some point, if you're doing your own thing today, I'm gonna invite you at some point to come into this and, and do this so that you're receiving the full ble blessing of the Irish fairy faith tradition and you're embracing the energy of this time of the year because if you were in live circle with me, we would be dancing the ceremony and doing it all together. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be creating this, but our ceremony, we would all be embracing and focusing on this intention. There's a phone call coming in. These phone calls just come in sometimes. Now I have to make sure that my recording's still going. It might not be. I think it stopped. Oh, oh there we go. It's back on. Okay. You should be able to. Now I was going to ask one question. Are we doing this on the watercolor paper or on our book? You're in your book right now. Okay. So if you're following along with me, just uh, I'm going to spotlight my you should see my my page now. So all I'm going to do is give it a light coating of gesso, Terry. Okay. Just a light coating of gesso. And the gesso I'm just putting down to prime the pages so that it it helps to stiffen them. And I have this watered down pretty good because I'm gonna do so many layers on top of it that I just want it to be a real light coat. I'm gonna mute myself because I am gonna do my blow dryer now. Okay, 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a very watery brush and I'm gonna, I've already spritzed, but I'll spray them again, my watercolors, just so that they're nice and soupy because we are going to paint our, our rainbow now. And then to orange, of course. And then to yellow. And to green. This is just like the chakra system, right? Because it's the rainbow. And then to blue. And then to purple. And I'm using a fresh brush because now to white. Okay, so once you have your rainbow painted, at this time, just set that aside and we're going to work on another thing to get it drying also. Okay, so uh, I know you're working on your rainbow, but I'm gonna keep one step ahead of you. We will come back to our rainbow in just a minute. Now, um, if you have your watercolor paper with you, you're going to want to cut about a two inch strip. You can eyeball it, you know, but you're going to cut a two inch strip. And you're going to want it, uh, uh, if you have um, whatever your longest whatever your, lo your longest side of it is, cut a a, about a two inch strip and you can eyeball it, you can measure it, whatever you want. And on this, we're going to end up painting both sides gold, but for now paint one side 
and set it off and we'll let it dry and then we will come back to it to paint the other side, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So we're gonna paint it gold. So at this point, just so you know, you're done with your watercolors. You won't go back to your watercolors. You can later if you want, but. All right, and let's set this off to allow that acrylic paint to start drying. We're gonna be making something really fun and actually you might use it. You might find yourself using it throughout the year. Okay, moving along. A Cosmic Smash book, right? If you're working in it, the height of the pages are 10 inches, right? They're 10 inches. So you want to cut, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You want to cut a piece of your watercolor paper that is 10 inches, oh, I don't know, by about five or seven inches. You don't want it, you want it to be wide enough because it's going to go over the crease. See that it's gonna go over the crease and you want it high enough so that you, so this becomes your template page that you're gonna work on. So can I just see a quick show of hands? Does everybody have their rainbow painted? Does everybody have the first side of their gold strip painted? Okay. So everybody's ready to move on to this. Okay. Guess what we're going to um, paint? Well, we can paint this. Let's just paint this. No, let's let's draw it first. We are going to draw on here a leprechaun hot hat, not a pot of gold. We're having a leprechaun hat in the traditional way. So you can make your leprechaun hat be pointed. You can make your leprechaun hat be pointed with a whatever this is. You can let your leprechaun hat be the traditional high top hat. I'm going to do this style of hat because it's more playful. So all I'm going to do is take a pencil. Now, uh, before you start drawing, listen to this. You are going to have your leprechaun hat upside down. So you're not gonna see the top of it, but you will see the top of it from an angle. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me just draw it real, real quick for you. So here's, here's the leprechaun hat, right? It kind of goes like this in a playful kind of way. Got the belt there. And then the this thing, kind of flaps open, right? And then you it, it goes like that, right? So you want it to be something like that. You don't have to be real fancy with it, but you're gonna want it to be something like that. And then right here is the black band. You see that? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a acrylic green, the sap green, if you have it, or whatever green you want to use. And we're going to take an acrylic black. And we're going to now paint 
this area black, that area black, and the rest of it green. But you might wanna cut it out first or paint within the shape of it. Or the other way you can do, which is really easy, is you turn it over now and just paint it all green on the opposite side and then cut it out and then paint your black here. But either way, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna paint this. So I'm gonna paint the black last. I'm gonna paint the green first. But we have to let it dry. So paint and let it dry. And then we'll come back to this. We are assembling today, if you haven't guessed. And if you go over the lines on the outline, you don't have to worry so much because you're going to cut it out anyways. You know what I mean? So as I'm painting this, I'm going to share a little bit with you about uh, my Irish background because it's important to know why I'm so involved with the Irish. But the first thing I would like to tell you is that my family came from Northern Ireland, the Armagh, Navin counties. And we were not wealthy. We were um, landholders, yes, we were farmers, uh, potato farmers. <laughs> and, um, in, uh, there was a time in Ireland's history when an aristocracy came into Ireland and started taking the land away from the Irish, especially in Northern Ireland. And we, my family at that time, the McFarlands were the McFarlands, they um, got on a ship and they came to America, like so many did during the mass exodus time. And this is, this is in the late 1800s. Uh, um, in the year 1889 was the Oklahoma gold rush, land rush. And my uh, family was newly in America and they learned about uh, the, the land claim. And so they went and took part on it. Now, the day that the land rush actually happened um, was on an April 22nd or, or right around there, okay? And they were part of that. Did you ever see the movie with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman called uh, Far Away? Okay, that's my family. That's my family. They, they flew, you know, not flew, but they got themselves to Oklahoma and they were there on the day of the land rush and they found a little spot uh, that had a creek running through it that had a lake not so far from it. It had some drumlin rolling hills. It looked a lot like Ireland actually. And they founded it, they, they picked it up. They staked the claim to that land and they named it Shamrock, Oklahoma. <laughs> And at that time, there were only 35 people who formed Shamrock. It was a, a small little farming community. It had potatoes and peanuts. <laughs> Interesting, huh? And um, they, uh, as they began their farming, um, it actually around uh, 1910, right in there, between 1910 and around 1916, 1917 at the latest, um, there was an oil boom in Shamrock. They hit oil. And so it grew, that little town, that little farming community grew from about 35 people to 10,000 people. And in 1910, the post office came into Shamrock, Oklahoma, because it had such a community, it was such a thriving community. 
But by 1917, the oil was all siphoned out. It was gone. And it went back into uh, a very tiny, tiny community. In fact, today it's considered an abandoned city in Oklahoma and only 116 people now live there. So that's my family's state. And uh, the interesting thing about that is um, they brought with them the the belief of the leprechauns. They bought, brought with them the belief of uh, the fairy. They brought with them a lot of the old ways uh, of Ireland. And um, uh, all the streets, uh, Main Street is Tipperary. <laughs> and there's Dublin and there's Cork and there's Ireland and there's uh, one other street, I forget what it is now, but anyways it's that's how small it is it's only like five uh, streets and they painted a very large stone that they named the blarney stone and it sits at the entrance into the city the little city which takes all of one minute to drive through <laughs> so there you have it that's my beginnings my mom was born there and then, of course, I was born in California, but I am a second generation Irish American. And uh, it's kind of funny when you think about it. So I was raised on Irish. Uh, I was spoon. I always say I was spoon fed of fairy tales, Irish lore and all the Irish superstition to go with it. Okay, once you have your little um, top hat painted black and, and green, we are going to set that aside and let that dry and move on to, we're gonna go back to the rainbow. Now, when I was just a little girl, um, I saw things. I had what was called second sight. Uh, my father's family was Romanian gypsies, and uh, they—that's a whole nother story. Um, I'm a—I'm a, a second generation on that side of the family too. My dad was born here, and I was born here, of course. And um, the gypsy ways are really quite tight-lipped, and. Um, I, I had second sight though, I saw, I, I was a reader. Uh, so I would tell my family about people and what was going on with them when, when I was a little girl. And I was always told I had a very active imagination. My mother used to say, where do you come up with these things, Kisma? And my dad knew, uh, he started calling me the gypsy brat. And by the time I was eight years old, I had my first deck of tarot cards stuck into my hands. They were part of my, my toys. Back then, the only deck that was available was the Rider weight. All right, so there it is. Uh, I'm gonna set my little ugly green hat aside. But right now it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it's ugly because it's not done. It's just the foundation, right? And I left a tiny little line in there for the lip of my hat so that I could um, fill that in uh, to define it from the rest of my hat. I'm gonna set this off to the side and let that start drying. Anyways, as I was gonna share with you, by the time I was uh, six or seven, I started seeing the fairy. Um, I didn't know they were the fairy. I would see, the, I, I fell in love with Tinkerbell at the age of three when they first took me to Disneyland, two or three. And uh, she became my companion. And um, she didn't talk to me, <laughs> but, uh, um, I think I was seven when color TV came in. I forget, it doesn't matter, but right around there. And I would, I shared a bedroom with my sister 
And I would wait. We would go to bed and I would wait. I remember this so distinctly. It's so imprinted in me. I, I would wait and then I would feel it. I would, I would actually feel it and I would get up out of bed and I'd always wake my sister up and she'd always be, Kizma, what are you doing? You know, cause she's five years older than me. And I would, I would say the proverbial, they're here. And the swarm of bald colored lights would come from the television. I, I, I couldn't see the television, but I, I could feel them coming down the hallway. They would swirl into the room and they would dance over me. And I danced like a little ballerina. I thought I was a ballerina dancing to them. And um, it was so disturbing to my sister that she told my parents. And the last night I ever danced with um, the fairy, um, I got freaked out of my mind because um, my father came on his belly crawling down the hallway to be able to get a peek at his little girl dancing like a ballerina under what she thought were balls of light. But his giggle pulled me to that dark hallway and then to see that image. And it, it kind of traumatized me. And it was an innocent act, but as a child, you know, when something is calling to you or moving or making a sound from a dark hallway, freaked me out, took me a long time to overcome that. I had nightmares for the longest time of being put on a conveyor belt and, and, and sent away, it was weird. But anyway, so the fairy, that's how the fairy first came to me, dancing balls of light. Okay, so I'm going to, I want us to move back to our, our rainbow page. So I'm going to invite you to blow it dry if it's not dry already, because we're going to do something very sweet with it. I'm going to mute my mic. Okay, so this is a good time also to go back to that gold strip and turn it over and paint the other side because your acrylic is probably pretty well dry. So just turn it over and give a, give a quick paint to the other side and let that dry. And then again, set that off to dry. And you're done with the gold paint for the most part. You're actually done with all of the paint for the most part. So one of the things at this moment, uh, I'm going to tell you, which I did not put down in your supplies, is that you're gonna wanna have like a Sharpie, a colored Sharpie, or a micro pen or a black Sharpie or a paint pen or even a white paint pen because that's what we're going to write with on this page. So if you need to go grab one, go grab one. I'm gonna give this another quick blow dry. It's not quite, I got it really wet.
Okay, I'm just doing a quick check in to make sure everybody's with me. Is your rainbow pages dry now or are they still wet? Are they dry? They're okay. The rainbow pages are dry. Okay. Um, if if you need another minute to let them dry, we can make the last thing and then come back to this. So should we do that? You're okay to move forward with it? I think we can, it's just a little damp. That's the only thing. It's not bad at all though. It's not bad. Okay, no. well, if you find that your if you find that your pen isn't going to write on it, then mm -hmm. um let me know just oh. let me know okay all right so the one thing um uh, the one thing i'm going to have you look at i want to just talk to you a moment about the irish blessings all right because there are traditional irish a uh, traditional irish blessing at this time of the year that we work with i'm going to tell you so you've got seven so we're going to write across each one part of that traditional Irish blessing, but it's not going to take up all of them. It's only going to take up about five of them. And then I have a modified or a modern Irish blessing that I'll read to you. And then uh, you can write one of those across. So let just hear this, just listen to it for a moment because you're, you're going to figure out how you want to do this. Here's the traditional. <sighs> may the road rise up to meet you. May the rain be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We change it. We say, may Donna hold you in the palm of her hand. But that's the traditional Irish blessing that's said at this time of the year. Now, um, there's a, a, a really sweet one um, that says, that's become kind of like the touristy thing in Ireland, but it goes, uh, may your troubles be less, may your blessings be more, and nothing but happiness come through your door. That's pretty cute, and I love that one. And then uh, I have one more to share with you, and it is a little more poetic, perhaps. May flowers always line your path and sunshine light your day. May songbirds serenade you every step along the way. May a rainbow in a sky, uh, sorry, may a rainbow run beside you in a sky that's always blue. And may happiness fill your heart each day, your whole life through. Um, so I would like for us, what I'm planning on doing, and you can do it however you want, but I'm going to write a line. So for example, here, I'm gonna start a little bit with the traditional. So here, I'm gonna write across the page, may the road rise up to meet you, because that's very traditional. And I'm going to try it with, I'm gonna try working with a green Sharpie. So let's see how it works. May the road. And I know my hat's going to be glued there, but it's okay that it's going to run under it. May the road rise up to meet you. Okay. So I'm going to write in green all the way through. May the wind or rain be always at your back. So now I'm in the yellow and I'm going to write the, may the sun shine warm, um, warm upon your face or may the sun shine um, 
Oh, let me think for a minute. May the sun shine warm upon your face. Yeah. May, may the sun shine warm upon your face. Now I'm in the green. The rains fall soft upon your fields. Now I'm in the blue and until we meet again, I'm in the purple. May Donna, she's like the great mother goddess of Ireland, but you might want to say God or you might want to say goddess, whatever fits good for you. May Donna hold you in the palm. And because I write too big, I'm going to the top line in the palm of her hand. And uh, you might say, Amen. We say, Banach Ne, which means blessings be. You might say, Blessings be, whatever, whatever salutation feels right for you. Can you spell Banach Ne? Yep. B E A N N A C H T, Banach, and then a space, and then T A I. B E A N N A C C H T T. It's right here. It's right here. Can you see that? I write bad. Uh, my spelling is atrocious. So that's your blessing. That's kind of the entire intention. But because it's a benediction, because it's a, a prayer, a traditional prayer that said, I wanted the words to show instead of cover up our intention, cover up our, our because this is a blessing page. This is really a blessing page. So we're going to just set this off to the side. We're going to make one more thing and then we're going to assemble. We're going to assemble things. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing okay? Okay, good. Um, now, my, my hat flew away because of the blow dryer. I got to grab it. And I'm going to, I'm going to hit it real quick with the blow dryer. I'm going to, I'm going to hit it real quick with the blow dryer. So I'm going to uh, mute me again. Oh, and I'm going to, I'm going to hit the, the gold too, just to it be safe because now we're going to work with these and we're going to put it all together.
Okay. So now I've got my, my piece of gold done on both sides. It's dry. Now I have my leprechaun hat. It's dry. So before we start using the scissors, guess what you're making out of this? You're, <laughs> you're making gold coins, gold coins, gold coins. But I'm going to share with you why and what these are about. And on one side, you're going to just cut off a piece that we're going to glue on as your buckle. Okay. But let me show with you. I have made on here on uh, however many coins you want. So however many you have, you're going to start off with. And then after, after our session, if there's more you want to make, you make as many coins as you want to, okay? But I'm going to have you at least make two coins. So let me show you. Let me show you the two coins. First of all, I'm sharing with you a design that comes from one of the oldest Irish coins in ancient times. And I'm going to explain what it means to you. You can see in the very center that there are three large circles of three circles each. You see that? So here, let me, I'm gonna make a circle. And if you wanna put a lip around it, put a lip around it so that it looks like, because these are indented, these are pounded in with a mallet, okay? And then inside of that, inside of that is a, I gotta find a different pen. This one didn't work. Let me find. Is a circle, a small one, and then a larger one, and then a bigger one, and then next to it, the same thing. And then over here, the same thing. Okay. And then you've got seven cup designs. This, this is the Trinity. This is part of the triple spiral of Ireland, although it's not designed the way it is on, this, on uh, uh, the new Grange. But find a spot where you can draw seven circles, one in the middle and three to each side. And inside of each one, you put a dot. This is called a traditional cup design. It also represents the sun. So that's representing one week, right? And then above it goes a snake design. And the snake design, you are going to make it a, 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 like this. You see that? That's a blessing of abundance, but it shows that this coin is good throughout all of Ireland. The snake design is the traveling path. It's also the, the way the river runs because Ireland is riddled with rivers and especially the Shannon goes from East Coast to West Coast of Ireland, all right? And so along the Shannon River, anywhere, this coin is good. It is um, sanctified, more or less. And on Ireland, there were seven tribes birthed, which went out to repeople the earth after the deluge. <laughs> That's another myth that most people don't know about. Okay, so that's one side of the coin. So put that on uh, at least one coin and then at least a second coin for now, just for right now. Your second coin, um, you're making the same design a circle, the three in the center. The seven. These were all made by hand. So when you see a pile of them, for example, at the National History Museum in Ireland, there isn't one that's identical, although they have the same symbol on it. 
They're all different sizes, but they're kind of uniform. And then make sure you've got your, your path. Now we're gonna cut those out, but before we start cutting, because at the same time that we cut these, we're gonna cut those. We're gonna cut that too. So at this point, cut your little piece that's gonna become your buckle. Um, at least do two of these for this time being. And let's cut all of these things out and, and have them in front of us. Now, the first time I ever had little fairy, the diminutive fairy beans come to me was the day of my moon time, my very first moon time. I was 11 years old and I, I had an older sister and a mom, of course. So I understood that there was menstruation and blood and all that good stuff in a woman's life eventually. Um, and it hadn't happened, it hadn't come upon me yet but it was during Easter or spring break. Everything happens to me right around this time of year, which is really quite significant and interesting. And um, I had gone in, I, I, I had, there was a spot of like a quarter spot of brown blood in my panties. And it was the weirdest thing, but I went and sat, uh, I opened up the closet door and I sat on the ground at the entrance to the closet door where all of our shoes, my sister and my shoes were. I don't know why I sat there. I'm sure there's some uh, metaphorical reason why I did that. I haven't quite figured that one out. It hasn't completely come to me yet. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but I have a sense that it was probably because it was the beginning of my new path in life as a, as a female, right? A new journey was at hand. I was now, bleeding and once upon a time even my age was considered a woman and childbearing age you know but uh, after my sister after my sister came in and saw me sitting there with my bloody panties and got my mom and my mom did my menarche by showing me where the cotex because there weren't tampons then where the cotex was kept and how to put a cotex on a belt and how to position the belt um, in, on me inside of my panties and told me, you know, how often I had to check it and blah, blah, and how to, you know, went over the whole nine yards with me. I took off and I went out to the front yard outside of my bedroom window where there was a California pepper tree growing. And I sat next to that tree. And I remember it was very cloudy, very overcast day. And I sat there and, um, I kind of went into maybe like a little trance, a little trance, because I used to see things all the time. But I very distinctly out of the trunk of that California pepper tree, very distinctly, and I will swear on a Bible in a courtroom, out came five very diminutive little female figures in very effervescent gowns with long hair and they danced around the trunk. And I had the sense that an, an, right then and there, I had the sense that I had shifted. I didn't use this verbiage then, right? I'm still in a child's mind, but I had the sense that something big had changed for me above and beyond the blood. And that was the first time the little, the little ones, the little diminutive beings came to me. So that was my second brush with the fairy. Okay, so here we are. Now, have you got your hat cut out? Because I'm going to show you what we have to do with this hat. I'm going to use a white uh, Poshka pin to show you. Um, once you get that hat, uh, we're going to cut three openings into the black area 
in the top circular portion. So we're gonna cut one right around the, the inner lip right here, but don't go past, don't go past the outer edge of the, where the hat, the top hat starts. So about right here to here, you're just gonna cut that, you're just gonna cut that slit. And then in the very middle, you can go from side to side like that. And then at the very top, you can do just, a, a, you know, a portion of that top line. So once we glue this down into our page, that's where we're gonna slip our coins. So our coins are gonna be seen out of the top hat. So yeah, so here's what I do just because it's simple and I know it's gonna be glued down. I just go from one side because I'm gonna glue that side down anyways. And I just cut the, the, the sections open. If you have an exacto knife and you want to do it that way, feel free. But this is all going to get glued down. So see what's going to happen is once it's glued on the page, we're just going to glue around it and a little bit there and a little bit there. And then we're going to be sticking our coins like this. See, they're going to go into those openings. So you can fill you can fill them up with as many coins as you want. So at this point, once you have it, uh, if you brought a glue stick or you have gel or whatever, you can actually glue it down to the center of your page, which is going to be right about there. And I'm going to fold over and crease mine. So I want it to be right in the middle. So it's gonna go right about there. And for right now, I'm just gonna use, for quick and easy, I'm just gonna use a glue stick. Now make sure on this this lip, this part of the lip, you don't glue the, you don't glue under down. So see how I left that little white line there? I only start doing the glue stick from that down. But I do the edges, I do all the edges. And then the one thing, I get those all down. And now all I'm gonna do is take one of my coins and stick it to see, uh, oops. how much, how far down I need it. And after we're done, you can come back over this with gel, you know, you can make it more secure, but you just want to make sure that you get those edges glued down. and that you leave the slit marks open underneath. I'm just gonna close my book and crease that so it stays in there. And then don't forget to cut your buckle out. So just fold your buckle in half. You don't have to crease it. And then cut your buckle. The stuff we learn in 
in grade school to do, right? This is very childlike actually. But then all of St. Patrick's Day has become very childlike. You know, in America, it's all about drinking green beer. <laughs> Which, okay, that's fun, that's fun. If you ever go to Chicago, the river runs green. But it's like Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> it's a reason to get drunk for most people. Okay, now, once you have that, just set it off to the side for the most part, because we have the coins to finish up and we have a, sh a, a shamrock uh, to make. And that's the last of our parts. And ugh, I told you we were gonna go the full hour and a half, but I wanna, I wanna share with you about the coins because these you're gonna be making on your own. You're going to create this on the back of every coin, right? You're going to choose one coin that on the other side of it, you write this, a pot of gold with a shamrock with the word lucky. This is your lucky coin. And on all the rest, when you turn them over, you're going to write something you wish for or something that you feel is a resolution or money or health or love or success or happiness, a keyword on the back of all of these coins, right? But one coin is going to be a lucky coin. And when you put all of these coins with all of your wishes on them and you finally place them into your leprechaun hat you're only making sure that what is showing the side that's showing is the coin side and then whenever you need just a little insight you're going to come and you're going to go into the coins of the leprechaun and you're going to see what oh, i really need for this Tell me how this is. It's like a little oracle. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to ask your question and then you're going to pull your coin. And if you pull your coin and you turn it over and there's a word on it, that's how you, you take that word and you apply it as your answer. It's the answer to your question. But if you pull the lucky coin, you turn it over. I got to find the lucky coin. But if you pull the lucky coin, your wish is coming true. Your wish is coming true. So make as many coins as you want. Make one side all the ancient coin motif. Only one coin has the lucky on the other side of it. And all the rest of your coins have keywords whatever they might be, you can make as many of these coins as you feel to put into this, into this hat. This is a blessing hat. Now, the last thing I'm just gonna share with you to make, if you want, you do not have to, is to adorn this with a shamrock, which in Ireland is called St. Patrick's symbol or total but it was before that it was the symbol of the triple goddess um so we're reclaiming it we reclaim it from the original standpoint of view so i'm going to show you and so i'm showing you one i already created and then i'm going to do one real quick for you but on on this side of it i wrote the full i i wrote um May the sun always shine all day long, everything go right and nothing wrong. May those, 
you love bring love back to you and make all the wishes you wish come true. And then what I'm going to do with my shamrock is I might glue it here. I might slip it underneath my hat or I might just glue it right down there at the bottom. Okay, so the easiest way to make a shamrock that I, I'm going to show you on this uh, scrapbooking paper here, I just pulled a piece of green scrapbooking paper, is um, you go onto the side that you don't particularly like, and you're going to um, draw a heart and a stem on that heart and then turn it on its side, draw another heart. They don't have to touch. Turn it on the other side, draw another heart. Okay, and then when you cut it out, where'd my scissors go? Oh, when you cut it out, you're actually cutting it so that, I'll show you right here. I'll start with this, I'll start with this one. When you cut it out, you can cut it out just a little bit bigger than what you drew. It doesn't matter. But see how I have those two hearts not attached? They're individual. But when you come in, you just go like that so that your shamrock is fully attached. And that's the easiest way to draw a shamrock. Then when you go to the back side, which is your real side that you're going to use, you got a sweet little, you got a sweet little shamrock. And then if you want to write a, a blessing, write a blessing in there. You can put as many clovers as you want, right? Why not? With your gold coins, your blessing coins, into your hat. Just make sure you keep them on either side of that fold, otherwise they're gonna get folded a little bit. But you should have plenty of room to put, if you need to open up those lines, open them up. There you go. And then you can embellish and put all your doodads, your sparkles. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to take gelato pit, uh, crayons and I'm gonna highlight um, my colors of the chakra like this to bring in uh, another sheen to them. Because I love gelatos, I love the way they look but you, it's hard to glue on top of them and write on top of them. So that's why I bring them in at the end. So I'll do it for each of the rainbow colors and that makes it, but there you have it. There is your little leprechaun oracle hat with all your coins in it and put as many coins as you want, you know, they can be piled on top of each other. And you can ask which line, one, two, or three, and then it tells you the three, uh, the, which line. So let, 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 I asked a question, let's say it said line three, I'd go to this line or whichever one I had is three. And I might pull all those coins out and just hold them in my hand, ask my question again, 
And I, I believe you just rub things together like this and then eventually one falls out. And that's your answer. <gasps> Resolution. And it can be used as an affirmation too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what do I need to focus on right now in this situation? Well, I'm getting ready to meet with so-and-so. What do I need? But you can bring in your pashkas, you know, and you can do your outlining. So this is just the rough draft, right? And like here, I, I would go like this to show, I would go all the way around. And then I would show also my, my green like this to show the center. And then I would go over with the black to meld it in. I might go like this and put this, the panels of the hat. So there's all kinds of things you can do. It's yours to embellish and, you know, you can add stars, twinkles, leprechaun twinkles, whatever. There's all kinds of things you can do. You can do it with black too. You can do it with green, you know. So you're coming in and you're just adding your fun, your fun, your fun things now. But I, that pen, I think I have to throw that pen out. I don't think that pen's any good anymore. New supplies. Yay, we like them. You can add glitter. Like I'm going to add glitter because I'm such a glitter girl. I will put glitter to all the back, all the surface of my coins so that they glitter. Okay, so at this point, I've shown you everything I'm going to show you for today. And um, I'm going to bring myself back to full screen. And you should now see me and the little thingy. Do you see me in my, my workstation? So here we are. And I know we're, we're at the bottom of the hour or, or at the bottom, the end of our time. But I, I would, first of all, I just want to thank you for being here and for uh, opening up. And our bard color is green because there are 50 shades of green in Ireland. And so our bard color is green. The, the fairy color is green. That's the traditional color. When you see the sheen of, of the fairy, of a fairy um, uh, ring or a fairy portal, it's, it always shimmers green. It's, and I've seen that actually happen. So, and then, and then we have the purple sheen off of the holy mountains wherever. Uh, anyways, I could go on, I could start storytelling and then we'd be here all afternoon and you wouldn't get to do anything else with your, with your day. So I am going to... Um, again, say thank you for my heart. I hope you enjoyed this. I want to open it up and have you each share. And um, I'm going to take us into gallery, gallery view. So we're all here. So please, please, please unmute yourselves. And whoever is going to share, I will, I will spotlight you. So you're the big one on the screen. So who would like to share? Anybody? Rhiannon. Okay, let me let me let me uh, spotlight you. Let me uh, uh, take mine away. There you are. Hey, I gotta make another uh, shamrock, but oh, I love it! I love it. They're so fun and playful. Don't they give you a good feeling? Doesn't that give you a good feeling? Yep, this is fun. <laughs> I know this is total child, but at the same time, it's very serious. <laughs> Who else is going? Okay, I don't have a book yet, so this is totally the wrong shape, I'm sure. Ooh. I'll probably have to redo it. And Let me spotlight you. All right. <laughs> oh, no, that's very cute. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Well, okay. That so, was fun. So here's the thing, Victoria, when you create a book, mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to glue that down into the book. Okay. Yeah. 
so it, it doesn't get you might have to trim it a tiny tiny bit if it's yeah. too long but but we like things to stick out okay good oh, yeah you know, we love things to stick out <laughs> <laughs> very cute very cute well kisma always challenges me on these things i see i've got to touch up because i got some white paint on the, the thing on here but um <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's very cute. And this keeps coming up. So I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> it's on the crease. So it's like, oh no, I probably made it. I should have made it wider, probably. Well, what you can do, Terry, to fix that, you know, is you can uh, cut out another top of the hat and pull out. Oh, your yes, hat. I made it so small. You know. Uh huh. And then uh, just glue that on top with your slits and glue all, oh, okay. glue all of that down or even rip that, rip that, rip off whatever you can of that and then just yeah. a new it's it's in the ditch here it won't go in very easily so this keeps coming up and i'm not exactly. so sure yeah you know me, i'm always your one that can't i can always challenge with putting the 3d stuff together i love it though it's fun <laughs> well and you'll be surprised if you really if you really use this you will be oh, surprised at how right on it's its answers are to because oh, it's blessed it's blessed by the tribe of the sun god yeah someone gave me my friend went to ireland and she gave me a sun god clay pen i'll try to find it it's it's really wonderful That's and she, i think she understood me better when she came back she didn't think i was quite as strange as she thought i was before she went she went but um yeah he had like um, rays, wiggly rays off of his head. Does it look like this? This is the tradition. Oh, I can't see it. Can you, can I don't remember. It? This it's is not, yeah. well, the no. traditional carving of Lou Lomfada. Oh, see the yeah. solar disc around his head here. Let me let me make a. Um, well, it was just a pen. It was very small, and it was clay and fired, and it had yes, you know it was. Yes real abstract looking. This is made out of wow. uh, 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 peat or what's called, you know, bog, bog soil in Ireland. So this is the traditional soil that they do their carvings with. And as you can say, see, he's got his solar disc around his head and a, his torque around his neck and his spear, mm -hmm. Lulamfada, it holds the gay bola. Whoops which we'll be dealing with later in the year when we get into summer. March, we'll be working with the um, second uh, fairy treasure. You know, in, in, in winter, you worked with the earth, you worked with, um, we did the, uh, I don't think you were at that one, Terry. I think that was the one that, that you missed, um, but we started working with the fairy treasures. Remember, Rhiannon? And, I think that's the one I missed. Uh, I'm almost like, positive, but we worked with the. Um, what did we do for that one? That was the. Um, we were. I have to find it here. Oh my god. That's you saying fairy treasures that don't bring. It doesn't come to mind. <laughs> talismans, the fairy talismans. Yeah, we worked with it. We worked with the first one. I can't find it here. Um, the the Leofall Stone of Destiny. Oh, right. I thought Terry was there with the Leophyte Stone because that's when I made that. This one? Yeah. Weren't you there, Terry? No. 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 She wasn't there. And I didn't. I think that was the one, yeah. I didn't record though, that. Uh, you know, but um, so we'll it because we're in spring in March at our next at our final spring meeting for the fairy smashing club, we'll be working with the the second treasure of the of the two day drama. So, but you're so clever with these constructions. <laughs> well, I have to, I, you know, I'll tell you what, I was going to do something entirely different for today, but I, I have to share with you what happened. Jack and I, we do a nightly walk with our dog, Mari. And so we go to what's called the Sunset Beach. We live here at the beach, but we have, we live in a neighborhood um, that 
we're here's the ocean, here's the the um, Pacific Coast Highway, and then we live right here, and the bluffs are behind us. But around our entire neighborhood, which is about 500 houses, we have a lagoon because we are built in the marshlands, the flood area, like idiots, you know. And um, around us on that lagoon every year, in fact, we're coming up on the timeline, we have um, swans, two swans that will come and have their cichlids and then we'll have a swan family on our lagoon every year. It's incredible. But Sunset Bench takes us down a nature walk to the end of the neighborhood that's right on the lagoon and the marshlands and the ocean. That's our view from there. So we've got, and we go at sunset. That's why we call it Sunset Bench because we have on the other side, Sunrise Bench. That's the same thing, but it faces the sunrise. So two nights ago, we walked down to that bench and it was just, oh my God, the twilight was so beautiful and I was so mesmerized and enchanted and the reflection on the water and the colors and the colors and the colors and oh my God, I was in heaven. And I stood there and Jack's like, and I'm just like, and I finally went, shh, shh. <laughs> because he was he was harsh and my mellow but uh all of a sudden i saw i was told you want to give them the blessing of the leprechauns give them the blessing coins and i was like oh how am i gonna do that how am i and then i just kind of at that point mellowed out and opened up and i was i was shown the rain paint them have them paint the rainbow have them uh, work with the irish blessing have them work with the leprechaun hat not the pot of gold not the you know do the coins do the holy coins so i i only have seven um, because that's the number that's one of the sacred numbers the seven and um so I, and then I, I now have, I now have two shamrocks. I'll bring in a third one uh, because that's the three, that's the triple goddess. So I'll probably put one right here. Um, so that's how it came about. So I, I went, all right, <laughs> now how do I do that? <laughs> and it wasn't until last night I was sitting here and I pre-painted one side of this so that I could cut out some coins to show you right? Because these are things you really kind of have to, you're going to have to sit and think about what word you want, because they're keywords and they're important keywords to you. And um, then I, I went, oh, I can do slits and tuck them in. Oh, yeah, okay, that'll work. <laughs> so cute. I, I've got to fix mine. Well, I unfortunately, I glued mine down pretty good. I'm always challenged with these things, but I may have to just put the top piece on, but then I have to line those slits up, so that's going to be hard, but no, don't worry about the one below. Don't worry about the one below, Terry. Yeah, because it's I put glue medium down. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Just make a new top piece, cut your lines. Yeah, top piece, that's what I'm And do. then glue, you know, because you're just gluing the, the circle. You're not gluing anything from the slits, that whole section, right. the whole you're not gluing any of that down, just the outline. And, that'll work. and then down. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have any pretty green paper, so I just found some nature <laughs> nature magazine page, and that's what I cut my shamrock out of. Let me let me let me spotlight you just a sec. Oh, I said I just found like a nature page. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then that's what I cut my shamrock out of. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Cute. I love Perfect. it. Cute. Perfect. So, is that was fun. Does anybody have any questions or anything like that? What is the size of the book is supposed to be exactly? Oh, it's a composition right. book. Well, let me show you. Um, and and Vic, Victoria, I will send you to, uh, I will post to you the link to the videos that will have you make. Um, it's this. Oh, yes. Okay. It's one of these. Okay. That's all it is. Um, oh, you'll love it. I will. <laughs> I will send you the links. Actually, it's in the Goddess Moons. Okay. So if you go into the videos of the Goddess Moons, um, you are going to see. Well, let me let me ask you this. All right, you probably will end up making two. Oh, uh, okay. This is important. This is for those of you only who are here today. Okay. 
So those of you who didn't come but are watching this right now, I'm sorry, but this is my gift to participants. In April, I have the next new fairy themed Cosmic Smash booking course starting. Ooh. And it is called Ireland's Triple Fairy Goddess. Let me, uh, let me give you the, the web, the URL. Okay. It's all open and available. Um, you can go read about it. Um, it's a gift. So that means it doesn't cost you three a penny. Hey. Um, it is four weeks and it begins April 12th. So it's on Tuesdays though, from 12 to 1 PM. And here is the link and you can go check out the new page. And uh, I'm gonna put it down here in the chat. And of course- April 12th on Monday? Tuesday. It's, it's, Tuesday, okay. It's, it's April 12th is a Monday. Oh. It is? A, yeah, so that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> is that one gonna be on a Monday and the rest on a Tuesday or? Oh my God, let me look, let me look. <laughs> Unbelievable, I have the 13th down there. I have April 12th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. Oh, 13th. Oh my gosh. So it's, a, it's, it's the 13th, but I thought it was four weeks. I thought I was doing four weeks. So, um, so the 13th, oh my God, see, this is what happens when you, all right, Rhiannon, this is what happens when you create web pages during Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> <laughs> you can wait with the details. Wait, because let me, so it's going to be, yes, it's the 13th. So I will go in and correct that before I post the link. It's the 13th, it's the 20th, and it's the 27th. And I guess that's it. I just have it as three weeks. What did you name it? It yeah. is called Triple Fairy Goddess. And I put the link in the chat. Triple Fairy Goddess. Yeah. Now I will be posting it to the... The, the Smashbook Facebook page um, on Monday as the promotion for it. Um, so you'll see, but it'll say, um, I'll have a landing page to make sure that you get into the right. But if you're gonna, if you're doing it, you don't have to do this part of it. If you're gonna do it, I will add you on my MailChimp mailer. I'll just put you down for it. And then you don't have to click the registration button because I'm doing it with registration for the, for the email list and then um, the register, the PayPal, you know, or Venmo. So I want you three to do it. Yes. What's the time? What's the time you said you were going to do it? Pacific. 12, 12 Pacific. Pacific. Okay. Yeah. And I'm uh, in, I'm writing it on my calendar. I'm in. <laughs> Any of the fairy stuff, you've got me. <laughs> well, that's what the Smashing Club was all about, right? Any new stuff I developed this year, you had immediate access to it. But I decided that, you know, it has to be based on participation. I've got, what, 28 people in this Facebook club. And I've only seen, I'm only seeing a couple of people every month. So it's like... If you want the perks, I'm changing it up a little bit. You have to participate. Yeah, right? makes sense. Right? <laughs> I've been here. <laughs> the, the only one I'm missing is the goddess moon. And I just, I didn't have time when you started and I probably could now jump in, but I, is it okay you think to jump in late in the game? <laughs> oh, goddess moons, yeah, I've got everything posted in it. You just, if you want to catch up from January and February, you just have a few videos to watch. And the way I'm doing, uh, uh, let me just shut this off uh, of the recording. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for playing with me today in our fairy smashing club. Um, and I will, of course, see you. Next month in April, because it's March. So, and in April, we're doing another very, very traditional um, uh, fairy faith teaching. So, until we meet again, thank you.